Well, hello there, my friends. It's Tanya Gabrielle, Wealth Astrologist. Welcome to Star Codes, the forecast where we look at an upcoming event in the stars and numbers, the astrology and numerology to help us navigate the energy to the best of our abilities, as always. And this time, it's a big event, really one of the pivotal moments of the year, especially as we culminate into the final weeks of 2024. And that is Pluto opposite Mars. Huge because it falls during a time where we just had the Aries full moon. And that's where the opposition first started between Mars and Pluto. And Mars rules Aries and ruled that full moon. And then the exactitude of this opposition happens two days after the Scorpio new moon. So the Scorpio new moon's on November 1st, and then the opposition between Pluto and Mars is on November 3rd. And Scorpio is ruled by Pluto and also by Mars. Mars is the ancient ruler of Scorpio before Pluto was discovered. So literally this opposition happens during their respective lunations, Aries and Scorpio making the opposition even more intense, powerful, and a huge wake-up call. Like there's a lot that is going to come into a place where you need to just look, you need to see things. We all need to just be so aware of what is being dredged up. And that's what Scorpio does, that's what Pluto does, and Mars is giving the confidence and the the motivation and the action-oriented energy and the energy itself to just make things visible. So it, we're already in the opposition itself and I actually released a video on YouTube yesterday and it turns out it was just a partial upload and I had to reshoot it so I'm reshooting it today on October 21st. But what I want to share is that we're already in the opposition. The Aries full moon has already happened. That was October 17th. That's when it really began. And now we're moving closer and closer into that moment on November 3rd. And what makes it even more powerful is that the US elections are two days later on November 5th. So this opposition will be active during that time. So that's also tied to the whole shift in the US that's going on now. Remember, Pluto plays such a big role for everyone because of its change of signs from Capricorn to Aquarius. And of course, I've talked about this as have so many astrologers. This is the big moment coming up on November 19th where Pluto finally, finally leaves Capricorn and moves into Aquarius. So now we're at the end. We're at the final push. This is the most intense time where we really feel the pressure of Pluto. And it is during this time that Mars moves to 29 degrees in Cancer, a sign that is not so comfortable for Mars. In ancient astrology, Mars is in its fall in Cancer, which means it's somewhat weakened. However, Mars in Cancer means it protects family. Cancer is the mother sign, the family, the home, nurturing. And when Cancer is in that sign, there's a, a huge focus on making sure that the family or the homeland or the home itself is protected. So that also plays a part. So moving back to there's so many pieces of the puzzle, so many layers, right? So Pluto is the big planet. And so in terms of the US election, we also are completing the Pluto return for the US right now. So when the US was born in 1776, Pluto was at 27 degrees Capricorn. So it had its first return after 248 years, and that is completing now. And Pluto is the planet of transformation, of life, death, rebirth, of purging, of looking at power, power struggles, power over others, empowerment, disempowerment, and unconscious pain, underlying issues that are needing to be exposed and addressed in order to facilitate a, an internal shift, a transformation. So truly what has been 
suppressed or unseen or underlying or beneath the surface is bubbling up everywhere and being made visible in Mars is the trigger. Mars is the activator. Mars is going in and saying, okay, we got to look, we got to see. And Mars can trigger you emotionally while in Cancer, Cancer is a water sign and Pluto being the ruler of Scorpio, another water sign. There's so much here that's feelings you may be having that just want to be addressed and they may feel extreme because we're going to extremes this is an opposition so it can be the extreme in one spectrum the extreme extreme in the other and then voila Pluto's pointing out also Mars's really positive sides which is the courage which is the confidence which is the ability to step up and be brave and and take a stand when needed or just go independently in a direction that may not be part of being politically correct or the status quo. You remember that Pluto's about to move into Aquarius, which is so about being unique and not towing the line. So we are really moving into this internal space of trusting you know Pluto and Mars when they're in opposition because they're also co-rulers of Scorpio that's a very big awakening of your psychic awareness your intuition and Pluto digs really really deeply uncovering and then Mars is there being very brave to accept what is being uncovered so the growth that we can have at this time is really stunning so we have this beautiful kite to help us take flight in the astrology. So if you look at the actual map, you'll see a more aqua green color that paints a triangle between the moon, which is conjunct Mercury, right at the moment of exactitude of the Pluto and Mars opposition. So moon conjunct Mercury are trying to Neptune and they're trying to Mars. So that is the grand trine which is quite stunning it helps us to really focus on the internal spiritual galactic sense the multi-dimensional sense and then they're pointing that grand trine is pointing to pluto and you can see the darker blue arrows pointing to pluto at the bottom of the chart 29 degrees in capricorn and that creates a kite and a kite in astrology is very powerful in that it indicates a lifting up and two triangles coming together and triangles in astrology are very fortunate these are all trines and sextiles so it's very harmonious energy but it's empowered by the opposition of Mars on the handle of the kite and Pluto at the top of the kite so Pluto is where we're heading and Pluto is the transformation the empowerment the planet that's moving into Aquarius and beginning the Aquarian age so the Aquarian age is taking flight with this opposition with Mars at the handle and Mars is making sure we are brave enough and courageous enough confident enough and motivated to instinctually put things into action right it's like we have no choice we're just moving forward we're not looking back with Mars Mars rules Aries the first sign never looks back only looks forward so being present in this moment is the key so there are going to be three peak periods of Mars opposite Pluto and the reason is that Mars stations retrograde on December 7th so after that first peak period on November 3rd Mars starts moving back and then crosses Pluto again in its retrograde on January 7th and that day is important too the first peak period is November 3rd, two days before the U.S. election. The second peak period is January 7th, which is one day or just hours after that infamous January 6th date. And then the final peak period is April 24th, which follows the two super intense eclipses in March. So literally Mars will be in Cancer for a long time, early September, all the way through to the end of April with a quick sojourn in Leo because Mars moves into Leo in November and then stays there for about a month and a half or so. So huge, right? That we have all this Cancerian energy. Remember 
Focusing on the U.S. again, the Pluto return is happening at the same time. It's finishing up. The U.S. is a Cancer, being born July 4th. Mars is in Cancer. And so this is all tying into a rebirth, a reset. And we haven't even touched upon all the rest of the incredible aspects in 2025 that are happening as well, which is that the rest of the slow moving outer planets are also changing signs, just like Pluto. They're moving to zero degrees of a new sign. And then amazingly, there is a second kite that is being formed from this grand trine. So look at the grand trine again. It's Mercury conjunct the moon. And then there is Neptune. And then there is Mars. They create that beautiful grand trine. And they are also pointing to Uranus, which is on the right side in the seventh house in Taurus, 25 degrees Taurus. And Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. So we have another Aquarian theme. And this second kite, which again indicates flight and transition being accelerated as you have the bird's eye view, is showing you that the end result is being set free. And what do we yearn for more than to have the freedom of movement, the freedom to be who we are, the sovereignty, the independence. And so this whole year that's coming up in 2025 is going to be focused on how do we set ourselves free? And the way this is going to happen is incredibly, the other slow moving planets, the outer planets, are all moving to zero degrees after Pluto did on November 19th of this year. In 2025, the rest of the slow moving planets are moving to zero degrees of new signs. And this is happening during a nine universal year in the numerology. Nine is endings and zero degrees of new signs is beginnings. And so we are truly shifting in a remarkable way, unprecedented way in 2025. And so I'd like to help you navigate this incredible year that's coming up in 2025 by inviting you to my 11th annual Ultimate Yearly Forecast, where I preview the star codes, the astrology, the numerology, including your personal astrology and numerology and so much more. You can watch a short video about it at 2025forecast.com. It truly is going to be a remarkable event. And we only have a limited amount of tickets available at a very special early bird price. So make sure you reserve it. I will be answering questions live at the end. Anything you want to ask about 2025. So just check out the details in the free video at 2025forecast.com and have a gorgeous week. I look forward to our next Star Code podcast, which will be on the Scorpio New Moon. And uh, wish you all the best. Lots of love.